Africa, where it all began. The first fire, the first man to stand up, and the first stand-up man. The stand-up man flourished, bringing joy and a good date night to millions of villagers, before he eventually migrated, bringing stand-up comedy here, here, and here. But oddly, never here. As comedy flourished abroad, the African stand-up man disappeared. Until now. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Trevor Noah. Thumbs up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. How you guys doing? I guess that means good. That's what the sound means, right? Woo! There's no sound for sad. Does anyone make that sound? How are you feeling? Oh, no. It's, it's really just that. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks for coming out. You guys are looking great and uh, relaxed. Nice weather, isn't it? Yes, yeah, very chilled out. I just got back from Atlanta. It was uh, 107 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, hottest way. The worst thing is everyone comes up to me and they go, well, you, you must be used to this being from Africa. And I'm, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm from Africa, but that shit is hot. That was just, no. I was scared to go jogging because I thought if I ran out in the street and fainted, wouldn't the local news love that? I'd be running and I'd fall down in the heat. They would have their vans reporting live. They'd be standing there going, so hot in Atlanta, even Africans are fainting. <laughs> oh, so I'm enjoying this. Really happy to be here, you know? This is, uh, this is gonna be good for us, I, I hope. I say I hope because I never know with stand-up comedy. It's just, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's an awkward experience I find. I'm always nervous. And I find comedy is very similar to sex for me. Um, well, it's exactly like sex when you think about it. With me, the comedian, playing the role of the man, and you, the audience, the role of the woman. <laughs> because it's my job to satisfy you and you just have to sit there. <laughs> and then, just like sex, my success or failure will somehow be determined by how much noise you make during my performance. <laughs> Which makes it a one-sided affair, I feel, you know? It's, yeah, I mean, maybe you're the quiet type. <laughs> I, I hope we have magic tonight. I hope we create something wonderful. I mean, for many of us, it's our first time together, and that means it might be awkward. I understand this. <laughs> and if that's the case, I want you to know that I'll look into your eyes, I'll see that I'm freaking you out, and I'll stop. <laughs> I'll stop, and I'll flip you back over, and we'll go back to the simple stuff. <laughs> Just, okay. I've, uh, I've been in America for a few months now, and I'm, I'm really just thrown by the place. It's uh, not what I expected at all. Uh, different from the brochures and the pamphlets. Uh, there's many assumptions I had about America before I came here, and I've come to learn that those were wrong. For one, I just assumed people spoke English here. Um, <laughs> it's far from it. It's not, you know what, it's not so much the language, so much as the pronunciation of words that throws me off. It's just what Americans have done with the language. You guys have just... Wow, you've just, you've done something. You've put 22s on the English language. You've got rims that just pimp my language. That's what you've gone with, you know? I don't understand. I was chatting to this woman downtown the other day. She came up to me and she wanted me to see something. I don't know what though. She was like, oh my God, look over there. I said, look over what? She's like, over there. Look at that her. And I said, her? She's like, no, her, her. Look, there's two of them. I understand nothing, even the small words, just the pronunciation, you know, small things that get you by. Uh, for instance, I pronounce the opposites of uncle as aunt. I say my aunt. Out here you say my aunt, which to me is an insect, <laughs> which made me look like an ass when my friend told me his aunt died. <laughs> and I was like, so what? There's tons of those out there. 
What a great way to end a friendship. I couldn't get help the other day when searching for a battery for my remote control, because that's what I say, battery, a small form of power. Yes, in America, you say battery, which to me is a different form of power. Sponsored by Chris Brown. Very... <laughs> And you know what, I understand. We live on different sides of the globe, so it's fine. The language will evolve. This is something I've, I've come to understand. But I, I hope I change one thing in your hearts forever. Just one thing. And that is that animal in the wild that looks like a horse. It has black and white stripes. Yeah, do me a favor. From now on, please, it's not zebra, okay? It's zebra. Yeah? Just like it's not debra, it's debra. Same structure of word. Plus, you cannot name them because you do not have them. <laughs> Zebra. This is madness. Everything out here is different. Do you know how hard it is to learn when you come out here? You have to change everything. There's the measurement system, which is just, I mean, America, you guys have your own thing, the imperial system, you know? On my side of the world, we use the metric system, and by my side, I mean the rest of the world, you know? <laughs> We have the metric system, which is, amongst other things, very efficient. It's a very simple process. You know, everything goes into each other, and out here you have imperial, which is fine. I mean, I won't judge you if you want to be imaginary. That's up to you. <laughs> but I just feel like there's some consistency that's needed. Small things, like, for instance, uh, when we abbreviate our small measurement, milligrams, we use MG, milligrams, MG, milligrams. Yeah, yeah. And you guys have, uh, have ounces, ounces, which you then abbreviate OZ. There's no Z in the word, ounces. I don't know. That, that's pale in comparison to what you've done with pounds. That for me, please explain to me how the abbreviation for pounds became LBS. LB, pounds. I look like the idiot walking into the store going, could I please have the two labs bag of sugar? The guy was like, you mean pounds? I said, I don't see the P, no, I don't. Well, it means pounds. It's not LBS. A lot of bullshit. That's what it stands for. <laughs> this is horrible. In fact, it's, it's, it's crazy. You do realize the imperial system is so inefficient that even American drug dealers have switched over to metric. <laughs> even drug dealers got to the point where they said, we need some order, we're going with metric. And I, I thought, I honestly thought this was an anomaly. I thought, you know what, this is just one of those things, it's a coincidence, but it's not. Americans do not care about abbreviation nor the English language. They, they just, they don't give a damn. I learned this in the small things. Like, uh, like, for instance, when I was in Tennessee, I stumbled on an organization known as the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> you heard of them? <laughs> Worst magic show ever. <laughs> Guy gave me a pamphlet, he was like, come and see the Grand Wizard. Grand Wizard, the Grand Wizard, didn't do one trick. Not even one trick. I mean, I noticed a few black people disappear, but I mean, that's not magic. <laughs> no, that's just Reaganomics. I wasn't impressed by that. Like, where's the magic? I sat there forever. These guys running around in their sheets. Yeah, the KKK, as they're affectionately known. Has nobody bothered to tell them ever that you do not spell clan with a K? <laughs> nobody, nobody stopped. Even in America, clan is spelt with a C. The Ku Klux Klan, they're the KKC, not the KKK. <laughs> you realize that, Ku Klux Klan, the C. In fact, the name is wrong, the whole thing, the Ku Klux parts of it, that's, that's just horrible, because they, they got that, as you know, from ancient Greece. It was Ku Klux Alpheon, meaning a circle of brothers. And that's how they got their name. They call themselves a Greek circle of brothers, which is, which is wrong for two reasons. One, if your sole purpose as an organization is to hate black people, don't you find it strange that you've now named yourself the Circle of Brothers? <laughs> and secondly, do they realize that in ancient Greece, Circles of Brothers were doing very different things <laughs> with one another? Very loving, very, you know, yeah. If they were really a Greek circle, the sheets would be a bit higher up, you know, just more of a, yeah, it'd be one more hole. They're not a... 
I love it. I have, a, I have no problem with these things. I will, I will learn them. I'm willing to take this in my stride because that's not why I came to America, not to analyze the English language. No, I, I came to America because I always wanted one thing, and that is I always wanted to be black. <laughs> As, uh, you laugh, but it's true. I, uh, that's all I ever wanted. I grew up in South Africa during a time known as apartheid. And for those who don't know, apartheid was a law in South Africa that made it illegal for black and white people to interact with each other, you know? If you did that, then you would get into trouble. So for instance, this uh, black young lady here sitting with the white guy, if you did this in South Africa, then they'd arrest you guys. You couldn't, during apartheid, you couldn't, well, they'd arrest the black girl, they'd just ask you not to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so this was awkward for me because I grew up in a mixed family, you know? Uh, well, with me being the mixed one in the family. Uh, <laughs> Uh, my mother's a black woman, South African, and my father's Swiss, from Switzerland. So he was a white man, and basically, well, he still is a white man. It's not like he, it's not like he changed. Sorry, I said was, like through hard work and determination, he became black, which is not, didn't, that guy's looking at me like, is that possible? It's not, no, sir. You're fine, you're 100% fine. Your position of privilege is just the way it was. It's, although it would be something, though, if you could work so hard you became black, that would just be, wouldn't it? That would change the workplace forever. You see guys walking into their office, talking to the boss. Jim, I, uh, I think I'm gonna take a few days off. I, uh, I don't know, I feel it coming on. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been putting in some overtime and I don't know, man, I just, uh, yeah. Yeah, look, I mean, the wife's loving it, but I can't take a chance. I, uh, <laughs> I just, I just filled out a new loan application and my credit's looking real good, so. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna take a few days off, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you're fine, sir. He's still, my father is alive and still very, very white. Uh, from Switzerland, my mother, Hossa woman from South Africa, yeah. And, and they got together during this time, which was against the law, but they didn't care, you know? They were mavericks, they were just, you know, they fought the man. My mom was like, woo, I don't care, I want a white man, woo! And my dad was also like, well, you know how the Swiss love chocolate, so he was just... <laughs> he was in there. Uh, and so they got together, and, and they had me, which was illegal. So I was born a crime, which, which is something they never thought through, because as a family, we couldn't live normally together, you know? Uh, like in the streets, my father had to walk on the other side of the road, and he could just wave at me from far, going like a creepy pedophile. Just... <laughs> And then my mom could walk with me, but if the police showed up, then she'd have to let go of my hand, drop me, and act like I wasn't hers. Every time, just so we wouldn't get caught. Be like, woo, she'd be like, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> it was horrible. I felt like a bag of weed. <laughs> and, and one of the punishments for this crime was I was never afforded a race. I was never called black. I was never called white. I got horrible names like mixed breed and, and mutt and half caste and you know, it was, it was a horrible time for me. And one fateful day, I'll never forget, I met an American in South Africa. And uh, he said to me, he said, well, you know, Trevor, it's funny you say that because if you come out to America, they'll, they'll label you as black. I said, really? And he was like, hell yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, everybody's black out there. <laughs> I was like, wow, well, I want to be black. And I found out it's true. Mixed race people are categorized as black in America. Yeah, the only catch is, and nobody tells you this, you have to be liked and successful first. <laughs> Before then, they say you mixed. You achieve success, and you get upgraded to black. <laughs> All the famous mixed people do it. Singers, like Alicia Keys and Mariah Carey, yeah? Mixed, but then they say black singers. Uh, sportsmen, like Tiger Woods, mixed, but then they say black golfer. The most famous mixed person on the planet by far, Barack Obama, mixed, half and half, straight down the middle. But then they say America's first black president, which is interesting, because when he was running, they called him the mixed candidates. <laughs> I see how it works. Everyone makes it obvious now. They're like, yeah, yeah, Barack, of course he won, of course. It, it wasn't that obvious when he started, it wasn't. 
I remember comedians coming out. They used to diss him. Guys would come out on stage. They'd be like, man, how many of y'all seen that crazy-ass mixed fool running for president? Y'all seen that mixed fool running for president? What are you going to see? Ain't no mixed fool going to be president of the United States of America. Ain't no man. Man, which white people going to be voting for a mixed fool? Even a black man can't win shit. Even a black man can't. How some mixed fool think he going to do it out? Man, that mixed fool, that crazy-ass mixed fool. How some mixed fool, that mixed fool. And then he won, and all of a sudden, they were like, my nigga. So... So I see how it works, you know? I understand. In order for me to become black, I have to work hard at it. And I'm willing to do the time. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I took the first opportunity I could. Bought myself a plane ticket from South Africa, and I said, I'm going out to America. I'm going there, and I'm going to be black. <laughs> and I got on that plane. It was an 18-hour flight. 18 hours of non-stop flying. And I sat there in my chair, and I spent every moment practicing being black. Just practicing. <laughs> I was like, I'm not going to mess up this black opportunity. I just sat there just working through everything. I was watching every black movie and TV show, just going through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean, you know what I mean, yeah. Yeah, King Kong ain't got shit on me. Yeah, what you talking about, Willis? I was just, I was grinding it. You laugh, but 18 hours of flying and I landed in JFK and I was fluent in my black American. For shizzle my nizzle, I was just, I was walking around, I was so black, I was even laughing, but I was like, ha, 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 ha. Yeah! My man! Ha <laughs> ha! Should have seen me. It was like, oh, this you? This you? That has to be the personification of cool, in my opinion. There's nothing cooler. There's a, black Americans are so cool, they can make you feel good about yourself just by asking if you are you. <laughs> you don't believe me. Get a black American man to come up to you and just be like, hey yo, hey yo, this you? <laughs> nah, nah, this you? This you? This you? And you'll be like, I think it is. <laughs> magic. I was that black. Not just any black, but the coolest black in the world, and that's American black. I can say this with confidence, being from Africa. I know black. I'm well-versed in the arts of black. I'm from the black factory. <laughs> I mean it. I've seen every kind of black, from light black all the way to, like, navy blue black. I know. <laughs> I know black. And there's no cooler black than American black. Nothing cooler, you know? Because American black people, I mean, you just look at how much they've done to influence modern day pop culture, you know? Uh, small things and the big alike, you look at the music. You've got, you know, jazz, hip hop, R&B, all black Americans, style of clothing, you know? Just this general swag that they've brought to everything. Even small things like walking. I mean, walking is such a mundane activity, isn't it? It's just a very, it's just very... There's nothing cool about this thing. You just, you just move from one place to the next, and, and pretty much everybody can do it. This is, this is it. There's nothing. And then black Americans came along, and then they just added in that bounce. And then, and all of a sudden, you look really cool. You just, you know? You look like you have a purpose. You've just got that. Yeah, look at this. It's super cool. And it must be hard for an assassin to kill you. Just like... <laughs> That's why if you look in American history, no black man was ever assassinated whilst walking, ever. It was when they stopped and said something. Bang! That's when they were, because they got the walk. That's why if you look, Obama, every time he comes out of the jet or makes a speech, he's always just got that little bounce just before. Because <laughs> in his head, he's like, you never know, you never know. You never know. You never know. You never know. It's not the walk. It's the cool walk. And by far, the coolest thing of all, coolest thing of all is the talk. I've listened to black Americans and it's the most amazing use of the English language I've ever come across in my life. Because they pay no regard to punctuation whatsoever. <laughs> it's cruise through sentences, it's fantastic. First time I had a conversation with a black American man was in Baltimore, Maryland. This guy walked up to me after the show, he didn't even walk, he just floated in. He <laughs> just came up to me like, hey yo, B, hey yo, hey yo. Hey yo, let me holler at you for a minute, man, let me holler at you. I said, okay. 
He's like, man, I ain't even going to front, man. I ain't going to front. I came out here, dude. I didn't even know who you was, man. I didn't even know. I was out here at the show. I bought my girl. We was out there. You came out there. You were doing your thing. I was like, yo, man, I ain't even know they got them yellow bones out there in the motherland, man. I was like, yo, this kid better be funny, man. But I ain't going to lie. You came out there. You was keeping it coming, keeping it moving. You was just beasting. I was like, all right, man, maybe this kid is the truth, yeah? This kid was doing his thing. He was keeping it out there. I started laughing. My girl was killing herself. I was like, all right, this mofo got flowing for show, you know what I mean? And I was like, no, I don't. <laughs> but I love it. It's the most amazing use of English I've ever come across in my life. Just that one word alone, just the strength of that. Nah, I mean. Do you know what I mean? You know what I mean? It just... It sums it all up, doesn't it? It's just, you know, neither question nor statements. It's just, like, why have we been wasting our time with syllables for so long? I don't understand. <laughs> it was a crazy day today, you know what I mean? Yo, that shit was crazy, you know what I mean? It just, <laughs> it just flows, it's magical. It says it all. I feel like I've wasted years of my life without now nah mean. <laughs> I wish I could go back in time and relive my favorite moments, watch my favorite movies again, seeing them bring to life. This is Sparta! Nah, man! <laughs> Power. Just give it something, you know? I'm gonna take that word home with me, home to Africa. I hope, I hope and I pray that someday I have a daughter. Just so I may name her Nah, man, you know? <laughs> No, because it sounds, it sounds exotic and foreign. It has, that, it has that thing to it. You'd be like, Trevor, who's that? Oh, this? Oh, it's my baby girl, know what I mean? <laughs> it just has it, you know? It's wonderful. Let's go back. I, I bet even greats like Shakespeare would have loved to use that word. They say he invented more words than anyone, but know what I mean? Oh, I bet he's in his grave going, I wish I had. <laughs> you can see it on one of those great plays on the stages of Manchester and London. Theatre actors just walking out there with their big collars. Ah, yes, Prometheus, and hither doth he come. Why, I am the son of a humble thespian. Nah, I mean. <laughs> That's the magic. That's what I was, man. I was that black. You should have seen me. Just walking around the airport, shouting random things. Brooklyn! <laughs> I didn't even know where that was. <laughs> I was super black. Oh. Until some guy came up to me and he was like, Oye, papi! Ya llegamos, eh? Pegando conocemos! I said, what? <laughs> He's like, yo, man, we made it, man, we made it. And now that we're here, our kind, we got to stick together, man. <laughs> Our kind. <laughs> 18 hours of flying and I still wasn't black. <laughs> I was Puerto Rican. <laughs> My dreams were dashed. And I thought it was a once-off, but it's not, you know? You go around on the East Coast, uh, places like Miami, oh, that's, that's the worst for me. Walk around the streets of Miami and I see people look exactly like me and, you know, they see me, I see them, we give each other that look of home, like. <laughs> Guys come up to me, they're like, hey, que paso, que para con los I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yo, I don't, I, I don't speak Spanish, man. Guy was like, what? You don't speak Spanish? I said, no, no, I don't. She's like, you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> I said, no, no, I'm, I'm, I shouldn't be ashamed. It's not my culture. I'm, uh, I'm actually South African. He's like, South African? Like, you were born there? I said, yeah, yeah, my whole life. He's like, Africa? So <laughs> yeah, he's like, Africa, Africa? I said, no, the one next to it. Yes, Africa. <laughs> Like, oh man, you don't look like you're from Africa, man. So what the hell is that supposed to mean? She's like, I don't know. You look like you grew up in the shade, man. <laughs> I 
asshole. Because that's what people expect, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's what everyone expects. When they hear Africa, that's all they think. Those are the images they see. Say, so, this next comedian is from Africa. And people think a guy in leopard skin will come running on the stage. <laughs> Let me tell you monkey jokes. <laughs> and it's not like that, you know? It's not. I mean, I do have good monkey jokes, but that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> that's not the point. Just everyone has these images of Africa. And, and it's not, it's not your fault as Americans. I, you know, I understand that as Americans, Americans, like you don't know much about South Africa. I've realized this in my time here. You don't know, uh, you don't know much about Africa as a whole, which is, um, you guys don't know much about anything, but that's not, <laughs> that's not your fault. You guys are so big and America-centric, you know? And you don't get outside images. You don't, you don't see anything. In fact, in my time in America, the only thing I've seen of Africa is always those, those, those ads, those, have you seen those commercials? Those UNICEF ads and the, have you seen those? They're asking you for the money. I hate those ads. They don't even warn you that those things are coming on TV. <laughs> I'm sitting there enjoying myself, watching comedy shows, and the next thing you know, you just see this horrible village. It's just dirty, and there's old, rusting buildings, and these sad black people, and I'm, I'm looking, I'm like, ooh, where is that, Cleveland? <laughs> And then a thing comes up, and it's like, Africa. I'm like, really? <laughs> Where? And then they show you the starving people, and it's always the same. They've always got the starving look. They always do the pose. They've always got that, like, why haven't you called look. <laughs> one by one. <laughs> and they show you these people, and there's a starving mother and a starving child, and it's horrible. And then there's a celebrity. There's always the most important thing is a celebrity who comes out and they speak for them. You know, that way we'll understand. <laughs> and the one I saw, the one I saw was Penelope Cruz. She was the celebrity. She's beautiful. Oh, and she came out and, and the starving mother and child were there and Penelope came out and she was next. Well, she wasn't next to them, it was blue screen, but she was, <laughs> she wanted to be there. She walked out, she pointed and she was like, this is Africa. Did you know every year more than five million children in Africa die of waterborne illnesses and diseases that could have been prevented? <laughs> you can make a difference in this child's life. I know you're sitting at home and like me, you're saying, Bob Penelope, I'm so far. What can I do to help? <laughs> well, I'm here to tell you, it's easier than you think. And it's a wonderful message, and she's beautiful. I'm trying to, I'm really trying to pay attention to this, but, but for the life of me, I can't concentrate because I'm watching, and out of the corner of my eye, there's this fly that's just <laughs> buzzing around. It's buzzing, and she's just ignoring it. And the fly is there on the eye. How does a fly sit on your eye? You see with the thing the mouth and I'm, I can't concentrate while I, how do they get the fly there every single time can somebody tell me this in every ad in every single ad the fly is there and it's always in exactly the same place for the entire ad for the entire ad I can't get a fly to sit still in my kitchen for four seconds and I sneak up really slowly but they can get the fly to sit there every single time they film I'm starting to think it's like a trick fly it's a Hollywood fly isn't it one of those trained creatures from Disney I know what those guys are capable of I've seen Lassie a train fly. They probably got the fly on lockdown. They're ready. They get everybody together. They got the starving people. They're like, okay, we're ready to shoot. Where's the fly? Here, sir. Here, sir. Come on, boy. Come on, boy. Get it. And stay. Action. Did you know every year more than five million children are starving? It's horrible. I hate those ads. I hate the people who make those ads. I mean, there's people starving everywhere in the world. But you know, you can give them a bit of dignity. You know, and I hate the people in those ads as well, because they make Africans look bad. Yeah. And I can say that. You go, oh, but don't hate them. They're starving. No, you know what? I don't care. I don't care. I really don't. Because people starving everywhere. And I grew up in a black family in Africa. 
And no matter how poor or hungry we were, we could still do this. make us look bad. Flies. <laughs> Gangster flies. Look like they're doing shout outs. Have you seen them? It's having a good time in front of the camera. <laughs> that's the worst thing in the world. But that's all you see out here. That's all you see. Those images of Africa. Where's, where's the world? We see America, you know. We, we watch your TV. We see your sitcoms and your, and your news alike. We get everything from Idol all the way, all the way to Oprah. We, we love Oprah. We just, you know, yeah, of course. I mean, especially in South Africa, we love Oprah. We love. No, 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 because she gives us a lot of money. So, I mean, we just, we just love Oprah. She came out to South Africa, and she built a school there. She built a school in South Africa called the Oprah Winfrey Leadership Academy. Spent $50 million building this school. Yeah. Most expensive school ever built. Most expensive anything, just ever. You know, and those children love her. Like when Oprah comes there, they run out screaming, Yeah! Oprah! 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 Oh, yeah! They just love it, you know? And this is a big place for her. And then, you know, it's a wonderful school, state-of-the-art technology, brand new computer labs, state-of-the-art facilities, and, and then, she made the mistake of hiring African teachers, um, so, which is not the worst thing. It's just the, the, she's had a few issues with discipline at the school. The way the teachers choose to administer the discipline is very different to what Oprah and America believes in, you know? And I blame Oprah. She interviewed them, and she said to them, she said, you guys aren't going to spank them, are you? And they were like, no, no, never, Oprah, never. No, we will not spank them. And she left, and they were like, yes, yes, we don't spank. Here we beat. <laughs> We beat. You don't spank a child, you spank a monkey. Here we beat. <laughs> and that's what they did. They beat the children. They just beat them, <laughs> which is horrible. I know I smile. I mean, it's horrible. It's just, I think, in Oprah's school, because Oprah's world is so different. Getting a beating in her school must be something, something different, you know? See the teacher walk into the classroom with a cane, angry, just walking around. Cynthia, were you talking at their back? No, miss, you were talking. That means you're going to get a beating. <laughs> but because it's Oprah's school, everybody is getting one. <laughs> you're getting a beating. You're getting a beating. You're getting a beating. Everybody is getting a beating. Look under your seat. It's a beating. <laughs> ah, Oprah, Oprah. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm going to hell for that joke. Uh, but that's, you know, that's, we, we see you guys. We see you guys. Well, a lot of people out here have that impression. I've learned that. I've learned, everyone has that, has that idea. I learned that in small things, you know. Like I do shows. I've been doing shows around the country, around the world, really. I've been blessed. And, and I remember one day, I'm in, I'm in L.A., and I'm doing a show. And we're sitting backstage, and this comedian comes in to the backstage area, and he's got a list of all the guys that are performing. And so he looks around. He looks at the darkest guy in the corner, just the blackest guy he could find, and he goes, hey, yo, you the dude from Africa? <laughs> and the guy looks up, and he's like, nah, man, I'm from Detroit. <laughs> he's like, all right, my bad, my bad, my bad. Uh, I, uh, yo, okay, Detroit, yeah, yeah, you, uh, comp oh, I, I, okay, cool, LA, okay, cool, cool, cool. And then he looks at me, for a second, does a quick calculation, and he's like, uh, I, I, um, yeah, um, and then he looks and he goes, yo, where are you from, man? I said, I'm, I'm from South Africa. He's like, oh, 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 you the dude? <laughs> oh, damn, man, damn, I, yo, I, I didn't even know they got, yo, you the dude from Africa? <laughs> man, I didn't even know they got light-skinned niggas out there, man. <laughs> damn, I, yo, yo, that's the motherland, man, that's the, that's the motherland. And all of a sudden, he just started giving me this speech. He was like, man, you know, yo, man, that's, yo, man, that's where we gotta be, man. That's, you know, that's the motherland out there, man. Yeah, I got to get out there, man. I got to, yo, I got to go home, man. <laughs> you heard? I got to go home. Man, you tell them, all right? You tell them. You tell them I'm coming home, all right? 
And I was like, no, we're not waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm just, I'm fascinated. I think that's come, that whole identity has come from the term African-American. This is something that's fascinated me. You know, it's the very loose term, African-American. Because half of the time, you use it for people that aren't even African. You know, you just use it. As long as you're black, they go, African-American. But it's a, it's a, what if people aren't from Africa and they're still African-American? You know, there's people from the Caribbean, from Haiti, from Jamaica. You know, they call it, yeah, yeah, African-American. Guy's like, no, man, I come from Jamaica. I know I'm from Africa. <laughs> I ain't never been there for a man. He's like, you want to stay? African-American man. <laughs> hey. the, prefix, the prefix to American has become as important as American itself. I thought it was just American, but it's not. No, 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 it's very important. You have the prefix. You know, you, you have African-American. African-American, you, you have others like Latin or, or Mexican-American. You have, uh, have uh, Asian-American. You have the most interesting for me was Indian American, which I learned about during Thanksgiving. Indian American. And then I was told I, I'm no longer allowed to say this. I said, uh, I, I now have to say Native American, <laughs> which is redundant, is it not? <laughs> because if somebody's a native of the land they're still in, should you not then just call them American? <laughs> How does that work? It was, it was the strangest conversation to have, sitting around carving the turkey and just going, you know, going, I don't understand. I can't say, I can't say Indian American. He's like, no, Trevor, you, you, yeah, you look, you don't want to say that. You want to say Native American. I, yeah, it's, it's a better term. I go, oh, well, well, who called them? Who called them Indian American? Well, well, we did. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. And then who, who changed it? Well, we did. <laughs> I see. And you guys feel bad, son? Yeah, yeah, much better, much better. <laughs> much better. <laughs> this is the craziest thing in the world, changing it, you know, the prefix. And I mean, I, I don't mean to offend anyone. As Americans, I hope you, you know, I see some guys looking at me like, okay, okay, move on, guy, move on. Yeah, yeah. Because that's the one thing, is because the one thing I noticed is white people in America, you never got the prefix. What happened there? There's no? You just, guys, you guys got left out? Oh, that's horrible. And it's a first. There's nothing? You guys don't get a prefix? No? Sir, you don't, you don't want one? No, no? Just American? No? Euro, Euro-American? No? No? Although, I mean, to be honest, Europeans would be like, no, no, they are not from us, please. No, 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 no. No culture, no culture. They are not European. So then I get, I get Anglo, Anglo from the British. Anglo-American, is that more? No, no, you don't want Anglo. Um, I don't know, Anglo. Colonial-American, is that? <laughs> Imperial-American? Imperial? Death Star-American? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I'm still searching for the answer. My two favorites so far have been, uh, I, was in the, I was traveling in the South, and a gentleman shouted out, he said, you can call us super American. <laughs> so, very well, very well. And, and my favorite was a man in Atlanta who looked at me and he said, why don't you call us honky American? <laughs> and I'd never heard of that term. I'd never heard of the word honky before, because isn't honky the same thing you use for the, 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 like your car? That's like, you know, and the thing that, that clowns use, honk, honk, that's, that's, that's honky. That's, that's the most honky American. That sounds like a, like a bad children's character for, for white imperialists, you know? It's like there's Barney, there's Ronald McDonald, and there's honky. This is like, you know, he's coming out singing to all the white kids, it's honky, it's honky, he's gonna teach you how to be white honky. It's honky. Remember kids, white is right. It's honky, it's honky. <laughs> the craziest thing ever, honky. I, and I, I really don't, please don't, don't get offended. If, you, if you're American and you're offended, I, I really hope that I'm not offending you. Um, I, I mean this because I am scared of you. Um, <laughs> no, no, really, really. The world, you don't understand. The world is shit scared of America. Like, wh like America, because you guys, wh what, you've been fighting wars since World War II? You guys haven't stopped. Like America, no, it's true, America's just like the most badass. America's like that really buff guy on the beach, just like not messing around, just walking around. <laughs> just like, you do not mess with America. It's like, you know, if America catches you building a sand car, it's like, what are you doing? No, no, America, it's not what it looks like. It's like, ah, ah. The only time people build sand castles is when they're gonna attack. Stop that. Is that a bucket? No. 
because, you know, America's like, yeah, America's that super, because you guys have the best army in the world. And you said, ah, America's that big guy that walks down the hallway and the rest of the country just stand on the side. Just like, don't, don't make eye contact. Don't make eye contact. Don't make eye contact. Don't make eye contact. And as America walks fast, like, Pah. America's like, what was that? What was that? Iran. Did you fart? <laughs> no, no, America, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, uh, yes, I fart. I fart just a little bit. I fart. I'm sorry, America. Iran, were you farting at me? No, no, America, no, I don't fart at you. I don't fart at you, I just fart just by myself. Just fart, <laughs> fart, fart on the back, not to the front. To the front, I say sorry. Please, America. Iran, was that a nuclear fart? No, 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 no. No, no, no. Not nuclear fart, just beans. Lots of beans fart. Beans. No nuclear America, please, please. I'm gonna come in there. No, no, don't come in America, please. Just fart, just fart, I'm sorry. <laughs> just. You know, it's just, we, we're afraid of you, don't understand? The whole world is afraid of, the whole world is afraid of you guys, you know? Because you guys, you guys have been fighting, and, and for a lot of good in the world as well, don't get me wrong, you know? That's why, that's why you guys are so proud of your troops, yeah, like the troops, right? You guys love the troops. Give it up for the troops. Yeah. Because I've learned in, in the world, in the world, in the, in the biggest democracy, you need your troops. That's why the troops are so high up in America, so respected. The troops, you know, uh, they're not number one, though, in, in, in the rankings, I'd say. Uh, number one is more sports. Sports is the highest thing. No, sports is the biggest thing in America. Like, that's just number one. It's, uh, it would be, troops is up there, though. So I, it would be, I would say the rankings would be, it would be sports, the Kardashians, the president, and the troops. <laughs> that would be, because yeah, you guys love the Kardashians. Uh, like, let's be honest, like, Americans are just, I've never seen anything like it. I was like, did, uh, did Kim get home okay? Did she? Yeah, okay, go, uh, yeah, check on Obama. Okay, cool, all right, just, you know, that's, that's the ranking, but sports is just not, wow. You guys, you guys love your sports out here. I've never seen more focus put on sports anywhere else in the world. Americans love their sports back to front. You analyze them, you, you worship them, you, you watch the game before the game, you watch the game after the game. <laughs> You talk about what might happen in the game, you talk about what's happening in the game, and then you talk about what happened in the game and what could have and might have but didn't happen in the game. It's just the craziest thing I've seen in my life. It's all about statistics. Have you seen sports in America? Non-stop, guys just come out there. There's no time for smiles or anything, just come out. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to it. It's the 2012 Miami Heat up against the OKC. This is the greatest final we've been waiting for in the NBA Finals. LeBron James leading his team out here, averaging 30 points, a uh, double-double every single game, uh, 10 points per game, uh, just in assists alone. This man is just something else. 90% from the free throw line. He's just gone in. He's statistically gotten better. His team coming in with more. Chris Bosh coming in with more assists, really doing well in the last game. Just like, wow, wow. Numbers, 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 stats, stats, stats. You guys know everything, every stat. Well, I mean, uh, he's got four out of five, and I mean, if you look at that statistic alone, it, it looks like he should be, he should be getting forward, he should be, and then, and then, and then it's just, it's just crazy. You know everything, you know everything. And then you switch over to like your business channels and your economy, and you're like, what, what, what's happening in the economy this year, Bob? <laughs> well, no, nobody knows, I mean. <laughs> nobody knows, yeah. <laughs> uh, we thought the housing market was coming up, but it wasn't. <laughs> but hey, I mean, that's, that's the economy. You never know, right? You never know. What about stocks? Well, I guess uh, stocks, they're up and down. <laughs> I don't really know. They're up and down. They could go anywhere. It's, um, those are stocks. We don't know. But the sports, you know? You need to flip that around. You need to get the statistics in the, in the economy. Just relax in your sports. Have fun. I, that's the sports I watch is relax, like soccer. I'm a huge fan of soccer, you know? Yeah, yeah, oh, there's some fans here. I love soccer. It's chilled. You hear it in the commentators when a game is being played. There's no statistics at all. Game starts off, and the whistle blows, and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this majestic match. It's Spain playing against Germany. Oh, and what a wonderful day it is. Look at the crowd, really excited. Oh, and the atmosphere is amazing. Wonderful weather, and the guys are just like, oh yeah, John, you can feel it. The players look great. It's wonderful. What do you think's gonna happen today, Martin? Oh, nobody knows. <laughs> I can't even remember the last time I saw a game this good. Americans will remember. Americans will go back to the finest statistic. The last time a black man scored using his left hand, jumping over a mixed race, half 
Indian was in 1967 when the, okay, they're like, what? This is madness. It's all about action in the sports as well, you know? As much action as possible. That's all about action in America. You guys are so action focused, you will take the ball away from the other team if they do not give you enough action. I've never seen that in my life. That's a horrible way to bring people up. Just go to the other team, you go, hey, you guys, you take the ball, and you've got 24 seconds to get the ball in that net. 24 seconds, and if you don't do it, we're gonna give the ball to the other team, you hear me? We're gonna give the ball to the other team. Yeah, we know there's a lot of black guys, you try to get past them. That's up to you, go! 24 seconds later, bah! You guys, you try, you try. <laughs> All about action, you know? Because America's different. It's different from the rest of the world. And uh, you, you, you don't really know how different America is, though, until you get here. That's the one thing I will say. You know, you, you think you know, but then when you, when you land in America, in your airports, that's when you know this place is, yeah, this place is different. Because American airports, unlike airports everywhere in the world, which have a certain level of joy and just all around happiness, American airports, they like, they're like concentration camps, it's just, you know? It's just people walking barefoot in single file. <laughs> oh, it's, it's no joke. It's, there's even signs that say, no jokes. You don't, you're like, really? It's just insane. You, you walk through those airports and, and you have to do things at American airports you don't do anywhere else in the world, you know? Like you, you have to take your shoes off. Your shoes come off and you, you don't know this as a foreigner, but they don't care. They're just like, you, take your shoes off. I'm like, my what? Your shoes, take them off. I'm like, why? For safety, sir. I'm like, I'm keeping them on for your safety, my friend. <laughs> You don't do this anywhere. I remember flying into Dubai one year, and as we get into the airport, this woman, an American woman, started taking off her shoes and, her, and those guys. I mean, you must understand, when you're in the Middle East, as a woman, you're already a sin. And now, to be taking your clothes off in public, these guys lost their mind. They were just like, Hillary, what are you doing? What are you doing? You, what are you doing? She's like, I'm taking my clothes off. I'm taking, they're like, no, 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 what are you doing? She's like, I'm taking them off. Why are you taking your clothes off? She's like, so the machine works. She's like, no, no, this is machine, not your husband. You don't need to get naked. <laughs> Put your clothes on and walk through, you whore. They were just, they were, you don't do it anywhere else. But then you come out here, you have to take off your shoes and you have to take your jacket off to walk through the metal detector. You, and they, and they, they are mean about it. They will shout to you, they're like, you, take it off, take it off. And, and you don't know what to take off. You don't take it off anywhere else, so you don't know what to take off. So you're like, you, take it off, take, take what off? Take it off, sir, take what off? Take it off now! What, your clothes, take them, my clothes? And now you're standing there, this man shouting at you, telling you to take your clothes off. You feel like a child in a Catholic church. It's horrible, it's just, <laughs> you're standing there. I mean, I understand the need for security, but they don't need to shout at you. At least, if they, you know, if they tried to be nice, if they were, maybe if they chanted instead of shouting, you know, instead of, take it off, if they were like, take it off, take it off, take, you'd be like, yeah, woo, security, safe and sexy. <laughs> they don't. This is a harrowing experience as you come in. And the worst is when you have to go through passport control. Oh, as Americans, you don't feel the pain, but as a foreigner, it's a whole different game. As Americans, you walk through to the US citizens line and they welcome you back like you on some secret mission. And you're just like, <laughs> welcome home, sir. <laughs> you know? When you're a foreigner, you have to wait in a super long line, you know, and then they tease you. The line goes right to the front, and then it comes back, and it comes back, and you finally get there, and you have to wait for that, you know? And they're standing there, and the guys are like, sir, sir, come on, come on. Sir, step forward, For step forward, sir. Step forward, For forward, forward, back, back, behind the line, sir, back. Get back, sir, get back. And, you know, this is a stress, you're standing there, and, and, and now you have to answer questions. Horrible, like you, you don't understand. It's, it's, it's the stress, you know? You're standing there and you, you don't want to get any of the questions wrong, because just like school, they'll send you back. <laughs> so you stand there, 
and you have to answer them into a microphone that's placed strategically low, almost so that you have to bow to the American as you answer <laughs> every question of his. I ask you these questions, questions you feel like you know the answers to, but when you're there, I mean, I just handed the man my passport, to which he replied, is this you? <laughs> Never before have I felt so much pressure to look like myself. <laughs> I was like, I was younger then. <laughs> it's horrible. And then he starts rattling them off. It's your first time in the United States of America, sir? Uh, yes. Your first time, sir, is that correct? Uh, yes. <laughs> sir, what is the duration of your visit out here? I'm going to be here for six months. Six months, sir? Is that correct? <laughs> yes. <laughs> sir, what is the purpose of your visit in the United States of America? I'm here for holiday. Holiday, sir? <laughs> yes. Which one? My one. <laughs> Could you elaborate, sir? Holiday. Yeah, what do you mean holiday, sir? You know, like holiday, like... Woo -woo -woo. Yeah, holiday. Yeah. Holiday. You mean vacation, sir? Ah, battery. Yes, of course. Horrible. You finally get in, you know? You relax, get in, try and learn. That's, I'm trying to learn America day to day. Got myself a place out in LA. That's why I've been staying for a few months. Live out in California in a wonderful area called Pasadena. It's very, it's, oh, it's wonderful. It's this quaint and neighborhood vibe. There's hummingbirds and butterflies, just, you know? It's a really, really nice place, and I, I enjoy it, you know? The only thing is it's hard to, to, to start life in America. That's one of the hardest things I've found. I um, have to get everything together, you know, like open a bank account, which was interesting. I was uh, sitting there in the, in the bank filling out forms because when I got to a section, I got to a section when filling out the forms that you don't have back in South Africa anymore, and that is you have to fill out your race. You know, there's a box that says, tick your race. And there's, and there's white, black, Hispanic, Asian, and other. And I was looking at the woman, and, and she was really helpful. She was like, she's this blonde woman, and she was like, um, uh, yeah, you can, you can go ahead and fill out everything you need to, and uh, yeah, we'll just go ahead and uh, open that bank account. I said, okay, I, I don't know what to do here. And she was like, um, let me have a look. Well, you can just, yeah, you just go ahead and tick, um, tick whatever race you want to go with. I said, what do you mean, whatever race? She's like, well, look, it's just for statistical purposes, so, like, you can choose whatever you want, and then you can, you can do it. And I was like, choose whatever? I was like, I've never been given that option before. And I looked at the boxes, and I mean, there was black. That's the reason I came. The black box was there. I was like, well, I'm, that's it. I'll choose it. But then, but then I looked to the left, and there was the white box. And, oh, it looked good. It just... <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. It was the same as the other boxes, but, ah. Oh. There must have been a reason it was first in line. It's just like, you know, <laughs> that was prime box right there. That was just, I looked at that white box and I was like, mmm, yeah, yeah. And so I looked at her and I said, any box? And she was like, yeah, yeah, any box. And I played it safe. I said, so I can go with black? She was like, you know what? A lot of them choose black. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so just because she said that, just because she said that, I looked at her and I said, no, you know what? I'm, I'm white. I'm going with white. And then she did this thing that I've come to learn is the reaction of white liberal women in America. Whenever they hear something or see something that they can't truly comprehend, they don't agree with it, but for fear of being judged, they internalize their emotions, and then they almost have like this malfunction, like a robot. I don't know if you, it's amazing to see. Because as soon as I said white, I said, I'm going with white. She went, um. I'm, 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 I'm sorry, did you say, did you say white? I said, yes, yes, white, I'm white. She was like, oh, um, okay, um, okay. 
Um, okay, uh, um, okay, uh, uh, like white? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, 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 it. <laughs> and I've learned, I've learned. That's the funny thing about being mixed race, you know? Is that people are always happy to say you're mixed. And you can say you're black, they'll, so they'll be fine with that. They'll be fine. But you can never go white. Ever. <laughs> ever, 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 ever. No, race is a one-way street and black is that way. There's just a cop <laughs> directing you. No, no, yo, that way, that way, that way. No, no, that way, that way. It's just like, race is just, uh, black is like a buffet. You can have as much as you want. No one will judge you. Ah, eat all you can. Black, $12.99. Ah, you can go wild in black, but you can never, ever, ever go white, ever. Ever. No matter, even if you half and half, you can never go out. Even Yoda, like the great, there you'd be as a Jedi, he'd come up to me and be like, mmm, too dark you are. <laughs> just, you cannot, it's just crazy to me. You half and half. In fact, everyone, everyone that has a piece of anything other than white is reminded of that piece other than the white. You can have anyone, they'll be like, oh, well, uh, is she, is she white? Well, actually, she's a one quarter Cherokee. Yeah, she's a Cherokee. One quarter, yeah, and the other three quarters? Oh yeah, white, white, but we don't focus on that. We, um, we look at the mistake, yeah, yeah. In a few generations, she might be able to work that out, but uh, not right now. She's Cherokee for now. It's just, it's interesting, you know? Starting my life, and, and by the way, just by the way, it turned out it wasn't for statistical purposes. A few months later, they found Bank of America was giving higher rates to Hispanic and black people, yeah. And higher interest rates, so it turns out white was right. <laughs> yeah. So you keep that color, buddy. Don't get rid of that. You hold on to that. It's crazy. I'm, I'm loving it. Living the American life, trying to do it. It's, just, it's crazy. You know, so I had to learn how to drive out here, which was fun. And to get a car, obviously, which I just almost couldn't get. You have to fill out forms, and then they, they want your credit. And in America, credit is very important. I don't understand the concept. I'm in the car dealership, and there's this Asian gentleman helping me. And we're going through the forms, and he says, so how long, how long have you lived in America for? I said, I haven't, I haven't lived here for long. He said, oh, this is not good for you. This is not, this not good for you. I said, what do you mean? He said, no, you, can't, you cannot lease car in America unless you've been here a long time, because then, then you don't have credit, okay? You don't, I said, well, I've got the money to pay for it. He said, yeah, that's not the point, okay? <laughs> that's not the point. In America, okay, in, in this country, we want credit, okay? Our country focuses on credit. If you got good credit, you can buy anything. We don't care about money, we want credit. I said, well, credit is the assumption that you can pay back the money. He's like, no, no, that don't count here, okay? <laughs> In our country, you have good credit, you can buy anything, okay? You got good credit. He's like, our country, our country. And I was like, so I, look, I, I hate to be rude, but when you say our country, do you mean our because you live here now or our because the Chinese own it? <laughs> and he was like, ah, it's, it's a bit of both, okay? Yeah, but no, cre no credit for you, no car. Okay, goodbye. I had to just buy myself a car, you know, this is a horrible thing, drive around. And that's the worst thing, driving in America, wow. On the other side of the road, you feel like a rebel, you know? Until you see the other cars coming, and then it's not so much fun. Every, you know how many times I did that, just going to the wrong side? Ah! And don't, don't trust movies, it's not easy to do that whole thing. No, no, people don't just drive, and no, they stop. They just look at you and go, what are you doing? In the movies, you drive past, what are you doing? Aren't you supposed to know they don't drive? They just wait for you to turn around and the street is so small You're doing one of those turns just watching them in your shame. Just like it's horrible. <laughs> I Had to practice for months. It was the worst. I remember I drove I drove into a street once I thought I'd learned it had been months I'd been doing it well And then I turned into the wrong way and I saw this little old Asian lady driving towards me and I was like no And there was nobody else so I swerved the car around I was like Whoa! I was like, yeah, hero. And I drove and there were 50 cars coming this way. <laughs> and I was like, ah, you bitch. Ah. <laughs> and I told, funny, I told my friend the story. I told him this. I was like, oh, this is what happened. And he was like, oh, that's so funny, man. That's so funny. And he's like, who was driving the car? I said, a little old Asian lady. And he's like, oh, yeah, you, you can't say that, man. You can't, you can't say that. I said, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, you can't, you can't say she's Asian. I said, why not? He's like, yeah, because that's, that's racist. I said, what, that she's Asian? He's like, nah, nah, if, if she's a bad driver and you say she's Asian, that's racist. 
No, so, so let me get this straight. Asians are not allowed to be called bad drivers. This is not racism in itself. Everyone else is allowed the world of bad drivers. But if I'm driving on the freeway behind an Asian person and they're swerving around, and I go, this bad driver, you drive like crap. And I pull up next to them, I'm like, oh no, sorry. <laughs> you're not a bad driver, you're just Asian. I'm sorry. <laughs> not racism in itself. It's madness. So now what I had to do was get around using a, a GPS, you know? Decided to get one of those. First, I, I tried to be a cheapskate. I thought, oh, get a phone with a GPS. That was a horrible mistake. Bought myself one of those, those iPhones with Siri. You know, all your assistant, she talks to you. She listens to you. If you're American, <laughs> she doesn't understand one word I say. I don't understand why. I speak English, and they're talking to her. Doom, doom. She's like, what do you need? I'm like, Siri, uh, please call Peter. You want pizza? No, 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 cancel, cancel. Siri, I need Peter. You want pizza? No, Siri, Siri, I want, I want pizza, not pizza. You want pizza? No, no, I, no, Siri, what's going on here? You want to, Peter, P Siri, Siri, P Peter, Siri, Siri. Mm, you're not making sense, Siri. Are you, are you having an attitude with me? Mm, you tell me, I don't know what the hell is going on here. Siri, just listen to me. Mm, I don't know, I, what do you mean you don't know? Siri, just, ah, bitch. Ah, dialing mom, what the hell? This is horrible. I had to buckle down and buy myself a real GPS to get me around, which has been working like a charm. If you don't have a GPS, you get yourself one. It's the best thing you'll ever do. Just don't make the mistake I made and buy it from Craigslist. Um, <laughs> I bought one off Craigslist and the guy who sold it to me didn't tell me that it was a Spanish language GPS. <laughs> which was not so good. Um, I didn't understand anything she says. Look, I still get around, because the arrows are in English, thank God. <laughs> but, but otherwise, it was just horrible. The and I hated it the first few days, and then, and then I, I fell in love with her. She's just, you know? I don't, I don't understand why more Americans don't speak Spanish. It's such a sexy language. I'm sitting there, and like all the men in here, you want to feel like a man. You get yourself a Spanish GPS. <laughs> Oh no, you don't understand. Traffic never sounded sexier. It's just like, I was punching random destinations and she guides me around. She's like, dum dum. Si que toco de que para con así. En 200 metros, sería la de la cha. And I'm just like, <laughs> oh shucks, Tom Tom. <laughs> you say that all the time. <laughs> This is sexy, you know? She guides me around, it's beautiful. I, I love that. I'm going to learn Spanish because of that. I'm definitely, Spanish has gone up my list. I, mean, I had a few languages in Spanish. Spanish was like sixth language. I spoke four languages in South Africa, and then uh, the fifth language was gonna be Japanese, and then Spanish was, but now Spanish has gone up. Japanese I've had to pause um, because of the earthquake. There's not that many of them traveling now, so <laughs> it's sad. There's, just, there's no one now. Just like walk around the streets, just, you know? But, but Spanish has gone up. Because I was getting good at Japanese, don't get me wrong. I was getting really good. You know, it could say, and, it's, and it's a great language, it's powerful. Because you speak Japanese from your chest, it makes you feel strong. Hey <laughs> Yeah, very strong. Whereas English, English you speak from the, from the head and, and the chest. You know, do, do you know what I mean? You speak it head and chest. You wouldn't know this. You wouldn't know this uh, if you listen to many coastal girls in America. Like, uh, I've been in in places like California, where women insist on speaking English from their nose, which is not the correct. Yeah, like, oh my God, are you guys gonna like do it? And I was like there with Tiffany, and we were talking, and that's, that's not the right way. You're not using your lungs. I know this because when I choked her, she sounded exactly the same. <laughs> Jesus. Was then she's like, oh my God, you're like totally choking me right now, and I can't breathe, and this is so not on. I am so gonna tweet about this. This is like the worst thing ever. Oh, I am so dying, OMG. This is, you know, it's, it's horrible, whereas Japanese is strong. Japanese, you speak from the chest, you know? A lot of uh, the Americans are learning Chinese, I've, I've seen, you know, Chinese. I see people say, you gotta learn Chinese. They're taking over, Chinese. Ni hao, ma. Shishin ni! Chinese! It's, it's, it's too late. It's too late to learn Chinese. It's over. No, it's true. It's true. Because it's, it's also one of the hardest languages in the world. 
I mean, how do you, how do you learn Chinese now? Just, you know, they've got over 10,000 characters in the alphabet. You know this? 10,000 characters. That's, we've got 26 in English. And there's still people going, what comes after Q? <laughs> 26. This is, you know, 10,000 they've got. That's super smart. Although they must have the worst Sesame Street in the world. <laughs> I'm gonna suck being a Muppet in that country. I can just see them on a Monday morning singing to the kids. Si pao chung chao xi su xi chung pao chen chung chao xi Five years later, chung chao xian chim chao shu chim pao It's just horrible. Horrible. Japanese is easier. 3,000 characters and a stronger language. I mean, everything in Japanese is strong. Even the greeting. Konnichiwa. Power. Thank you. Domo. Arigato. Power. Yes, that's a great language. You can say other things as well, like kujire gambare, which means good luck, dolphin. <laughs> Granted, not very usable in everyday language, but uh, yeah, it works, I guess, you know, it works. I could also say other things like huh, niwa niwa niwa, niwa torigaita, which means look, the chickens are running around. <laughs> you laugh but I've used this successfully on many occasions. <laughs> By many occasions, I mean once. <laughs> I was in an airport, standing at the baggage carousel, and this, uh, this Japanese guy came and he stood next to me. And we're standing there and I'm, I look at him and I've been waiting for years to speak Japanese. I was super excited, I was like, what? This guy's Japanese. <laughs> and he's like, I can hear you. <laughs> Said, oh, sorry, I thought I was thinking. Um, <laughs> are you Japanese? He's like, yes, I am a Japanese. I'm like, oh, oh, konnichiwa. He's like, oh, konnichiwa. Pleasure to meet you. I said, oh, domo arigato. I said, oh, arigato mashtainamase. You speak very good Japanese. I was like, oh, yeah. So I looked over and I went, Kujire Gambare. <laughs> I'm not a dolphin. <laughs> but a thank you for the good luck. I was like, I can't believe this works. I looked over, I was like, huh? Niwa, 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 torigaita. He was like, <laughs> I don't see the chicken anywhere. You speak a very strange Japanese. <laughs> Where did you run? I said, I run in all different places, all over my life. Why do you speak English with a Japanese accent now? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I get carried away. You freaking me out. <laughs> I'm freaking out too. <laughs> you guys have been so much fun, man. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for coming to the show. Good night. Thank you.